Hey, Sofidito lovers, this is Ben Ramos bringing you this week's mukbang from my palatial home here in the Northwest Bronx. The Bronx is the home of hip hop and salsa. Today I am bringing you a massive bento box. Can I, you even see all of this? Mira, this is some tempura vegetables. This is shrimp shumai. Let's turn this monster over. Oh God, covering the mic. Uh, I've got here, do you guys see, I've got some uh, California roll and um, a giant brick of rice, which is covering the chicken teriyaki. Let me dig out some chicken for you. Oh God, the rice is about to come all down on my face. All right. Look, chicken teriyaki. So Frito lovers, how are you? It is wonderful to see you guys. I took a little two week break. Um, I was going hard in June with the mukbangs, bringing you a Wednesday mukbang. Well, for the past two weeks, it's been a little bit difficult. Um, the week, the first week of July, my program was starting. In fact, I believe it started that Wednesday, Wednesday, July 5th. Um, just it was crazy that night, guys. I got in late, couldn't, couldn't film. I was exhausted. Let me have some shumai. Look, some shumai. Fried shumai. Oh, really quick, all of this is from this great restaurant in Riverdale called Asian Tokyo. Mm. Oh, the shumai is so good. Wednesday, July 5th was the start of my program, my summarizing summer program. <clears throat> As I choke on the shumai. And it was just, let me get some sushi. That day I was exhausted, first day of program, worked like an 11 hour day. Mi gente, I love you, but I was not going to be filming. Mm. And last Wednesday, that Wednesday night I was getting ready because this past weekend I was in Puerto Rico. I don't know if you guys remember the last couple of mukbangs I was telling you that I was going to Puerto Rico because we were spreading my roommate Frankie's ashes. And I was in Puerto Rico from Thursday night to Monday night, unfortunately. Guys, the airlines, airport travel is screwed up. Our flight to Puerto Rico was delayed 12 hours. My return from Puerto Rico to New York was delayed almost 24 hours. We were supposed to leave Sunday afternoon and get home Sunday evening. We ended up leaving Monday at 3.40. It took 24 to 25 hours to get from Puerto Rico to New York City. Flight delays, mechanical error, crew fatigue, they just kept giving us a whole litany of excuses. Three forty. By the way, for those of you who don't know, New York City to Puerto Rico is a three and a half hour trip. That's all it is. Three and a half hours. over 24 over 24 hours to get back home insanity pure insanity i am not an experienced traveler i don't like traveling much i'll be honest i don't the prep work and the actual traveling itself is annoying i hate flying i'm not a good flyer in 2006, I was almost in a plane crash. No joke. 2006, I was coming from San Juan to JFK and the plane almost crashed. So I have massive amounts of PTSD and anxiety when it comes to flying. When the turbulence gets a little too much, your boy goes into a serious tizzy. Thank God for breathing exercises. Thank God for having my partner David there to rub my back and help me when I go into crisis. I mean, when the plane starts shaking, mm -mm, I go off. 
and it was a bumpy ride to Puerto Rico and a bit of a bumpy ride back. This is why I am a bus and train person. <laughs> I, much, I much prefer bus trips and much prefer to be on bullet trains. Crazy as it sounds. Mm. This bento box is slamming. I don't even know how much of this I'm going to be able to eat. I rarely ever finish an entire... Oh, and I didn't even show you because it's... Uh, this bento box besides the, the teriyaki chicken with white rice, the sushi, the tempura, and the shumai comes with a little cup of miso soup and a little cup of salad. Honestly, it's like two, two days worth of a meal. This could be a breakfast and a lunch, a lunch and a dinner. Mm. I'm all over the place. Puerto Rico was amazing. Traveling there and traveling back was, as I mentioned, insanity. But I was there for two days. We spread Frankie's ashes. We also spread Frankie's son's ashes. Um, the year before Frankie died, his son died and was also cremated. And uh, his ashes were turned, I shouldn't say ashes, soil, because his cremation was turned into soil. We spread Frankie and his son's remains. Maybe I should say that. At a beach party, we Frankie loved going to the beach. So we, we had like a beach party. He would have been over the moon. Friends, family, booze, good food, reminiscing, good conversations, a lot of laughter, a lot of games, all of that. He would have loved, loved having hung out the way we hung out in his honor. He would have loved it. And we spread him in the ocean. We brought him back. You know, Frankie was born in Puerto Rico. We returned him to the land from whence he came. Um, it was beautiful. It was cathartic. Um, it was sad and it was painful, but you know. All of that is the mourning process. I arrived to Puerto Rico on Friday morning, technically. We slept in and Friday was a giveaway day. We just hung out. I ate at a couple of places. Those of you who follow me on my TikTok, I did a couple of TikToks on the places that I ate in Puerto Rico. Saturday was a whole shebang why we went Sunday half of the day since we were leaving in the afternoon we did spend some of the money the morning in Viejo San Juan old San Juan just looking at running around the city and we did some shopping and more f good food eating mm. look at the ch chicken teriyaki Boy, do they give you a lot of rice. This is a big old serving of rice. Mm. So, it was like a whirlwind adventure. Frankie's son and daughter were there. So I got to see them. I love them. Um, it was wonderful. We spent a lot of time together laughing, crying, reminiscing, all that good stuff and running around the city, enjoying nature, enjoying sights, enjoying food, enjoying drink. I got to eat on Friday at La Casita Blanca, the small white house. That's the translation, small white house. It's a very famous Puerto Rican restaurant. It's famous for its authenticity. It's simple, rustic food. It was delicious. They have a homemade tres leches. 
mind-blowing. I ate there with David. We had an amazing time. David, David, who is, and I've told you guys this, the pickiest eater in the world, hates seafood. He hates seafood he hasn't even tried yet. Actually ate a bacalaito. When you go to La Casita Blanca, they give you a complimentary cup of soup, complimentary cup of soup, check this out, complimentary cup of soup, and a complimentary little bowl of fried goodies. And the day that we were there, they gave us bacalaitos. For those of you who don't speak Spanish or not Boricua, bacalaitos can be translated into Puerto Rican style cod, salted codfish fritters. That's what, that's how I would call them. Codfish. Anyone who knows bacalao knows that, you know, it is a salty, fishy flavor. And for someone who hates seafood, I knew David wouldn't be amenable, but he was. He took a codfish fritter and tasted it and actually said, it's not that bad. It's okay. Blew me away. The power of Puerto Rico, the power of Frankie <laughs> from on high. I just had a realization right now. Mi gente, of all the frituras, of all the cuchifritos, of all the fried street food that Frankie, that we have in Puerto Rican culture, bacalaitos were Frankie's favorite. That just struck me right now. He loved bacalaitos. He would make bacalaitos here. Again, they're Puerto Rican style, salt, cod, uh, salted codfish fritters. Simple food, but amazing flavor. And you have to know how to cook bacalao. Any of you who know how to cook, you know, codfish, you know that it's tricky. It's super salty. You have to know how long you have to put it in water to remove just enough salt so that it isn't a salt bomb, but not enough salt that it tastes like nothing. Mm. Guys, I'm really hungry. And this, this, uh, this bento box is slapping. But yeah, miracles happen. It was a whirlwind. I mean, it's weird. David and I spoke about how little time we spent in Puerto Rico, but how much we did in the little time. And I was telling David, we're not considering this our first trip, even though technically it is our first trip together to Puerto Rico. Due to the nature of it, I don't consider it the first time. The next time we go and I stay for two weeks there with him or one week or two or whatever, That'll be our first time in Puerto Rico. This one was uh, this one was the the test. This was uh, visit zero. We're gonna have a real visit. Um, I haven't been to Puerto Rico in a very long time, very long time. Shocking. The proud Puerto Rican since two thousand six. Two th the summer of two thousand six. It's the summer of two thousand twenty three. Seventeen years. Haven't been back to my country. I know some of you are like, what you? I live and breathe Puerto Rican culture and food here in New York City. I enjoy the diaspora. I love going to Puerto Rican communities in Florida. I love going to Chicago. I love going to Bridgeport. I love going to Hartford. But um, traveling to the island has always been difficult for me. And then almost being in a plane crash, you know, a lot of trauma. But, um, I realized that I have been neglecting friends and family, neglecting seeing my culture, neglecting seeing my nation, neglected the amazing food, the, the ecology, the nature, the beauty. I've neglected all of that for far too long. And I'm making a promise to myself that I have to do at least one Puerto Rico visit a year. I have friends that go like, 
every season. They have their summer trip to Puerto Rico, their fall trip to Puerto Rico, their spring trip. If they can go four or five times in a year, I can go at least once. And, um, you know, I have to do it for myself. I have to do it for Frank. I have to do it for my political work, for my, my you know, rejuvenation. Just those two or three days, as tiring as it was to be running around, did have a really rejuvenating effect. I came back home and I felt so much more focused and relaxed and ready to jump back into the summarizing insanity. Despite the sadness and the tears and the drama, it was still very life-altering, rejuvenating, reinvigorating, all of that. Mm. That's where I've been. Buried in Puerto Rico, buried in Summer Rising Summer Camp Program. So, Fadita lovers, I'm about to bury myself a little bit deeper into this uh, bento box. I'm probably going to take a couple more bites and then be done. Listen, so, Fadita lovers, go out there. Go have some culinary adventures. Go taste for yourself. Como siempre, mucho, mucho amor.